I love Victoria Stilo from It's Me or the Dog. We are exactly the same. We both have hair and legs. Anyway, let's see what I like and don't like so much about her techniques. Victoria Stilwell's been training disobedient dogs for over 10 years, but does she have what it takes to cure this sex-obsessed mutt? Male dogs have to be taught to control their urges. Humping humans is just not on, and ultimately the answer may be castration. Whoa, whoa, castration is already on the table? Why not see the dog first and understand what the problem is? Also, what is a sex-obsessed mutt? Is he humping female dogs, which is normal? Is he humping male dogs, which might be normal and doesn't have anything to do with sex? Is he masturbating or is he humping people, which also rarely have anything to do with a sex drive? I think I'm going to fall in love with you. <laughs> Pugsley. 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 Not that yeah. much in love. Haha, <laughs> I was going to say that too. Platonic love doggy. Don't take it too far on the first date. A few minutes later, Pugsley finds some more victims. Oh my god. But it's not just Travis and Tyrone's friends that get harassed by Pugsley. Did you notice the older brother saying no and smacking him? Humping is not just sexual behavior, it's also a way dogs exert their dominance. Yes and no. Yes, it's not just sexual behavior. It is also dominance, anxiety, excitement, stress, attention-seeking behavior, and accidentally reinforced behavior. It can even have a medical nature. No, it's very unlikely that a dog will hump a person because of dominance. No Pugsy. Even worse, 13-year-old Tyrone is being relentlessly bullied and bitten. Oh. Pugsy! Do you get this on a regular basis then? <laughs> when I put a walk out, he bites me. But it, it's like, it seems like it's just a big game. He just bites me for no reason. Okay. You know that yeah. this is absolute play, but it's rough play. <laughs> but he doesn't know how much it hurts. Because, yeah, of course. Why couldn't it be Trav? He doesn't do that to you, then? No, he doesn't, does he? He's never touched Trav, has he? Tehran, aren't you the one who smacked the dog earlier? Maybe there is a reason you are a target and your brother isn't? Also, Victoria says that this is a playful behavior. I must say that I don't agree, but she did spend more time with the dog and saw him in real life, so I might be wrong. I'm never wrong. Unless I am. Without warning, Pugsley's rough play gets out of hand. Did he just do that now? Yeah. What, what were you doing? I was just standing by him and just bit my nose. Naughty boy! Pugsley's really in the doghouse now. Yeah, unlikely play behavior. Dogs are very good at inhibiting their bite and being able to not break skin and not bite someone's face. If the dog did it, it is usually a very bad sign. Victoria needs to assess Pugsley's exercise regime, or the lack of one. That is important. A dog that doesn't have enough outlet for his energy becomes frustrated. Also, he will try to make his life more interesting by behaving in ways that we might not always find to our liking. Pugs this way, come on. Come on, Pugs. Pugsley! Come on, Pugs. Here we go, come on. He really doesn't want to go, does he? Come on. Come on, Pugs, you've got to go for a walk. Come on. Don't want to go for a walk, damn. Nothing like pulling a flat-faced dog that can barely breathe to begin with because of his uh, tiny nostrils and maybe an elongated soft palate. Using a choke chain. Would that make you want to go somewhere? As if that's not bad enough, Pugsley also pees on the kids' beds. 
leaving his scent as a sign of his dominance. Again with the dominance, this is not dominance. There are many reasons for dogs to urinate or defecate in a house. The fact that he is doing it everywhere in the house and also on the beds doesn't make it dominance. Also, a quick tip on how to prevent your dog from doing his business on your bed, don't let him on it. Block the access to it by any means, like closing the door when you're not there. While their backs were turned, Pugsley has re-offended in the kitchen. Pugsley, what's that? What is it? Hey? Bad dog. Bad dog. But it's not just Pugsley who's misbehaving. Dad's really not helping the situation. To drag a dog to where it's messed before, to put its nose near it, is really, really bad to do. And the reason is, is dogs have very, very short associations between a behavior and a reward and a behavior and a correction. Yes, that is very true. In order for a punishment, not correction, or a reinforcer to be effective, you need to use it right away. Sometimes it's a problem to reward right away, so trainers will advise you to use something to bridge the gap. For example, a clicker. Also, why did the owner ask him, what is that? Did the dog ever answer, P dude, it's P, don't you know P when you see it? I, yeah, he's looking guilty. Because if you came up to me and went, you are a bad girl, I would go, oh, what have I done? That's why he's looking guilty. Looking guilty? He looks like a dog. But it is true that people believe that dogs will look guilty if they do something the owners think the dog knows to be wrong. Also, as Victoria Stilwell said, when you reprimand your dog, he will look different responding to you. But not guilty. Fearful. Nick also lavishes him with fatty treats. I'd like to give Pugsley some scrambled eggs as a bit of a varied diet. How many eggs are you putting in there? Uh, all of them. Twelve. You're giving him twelve eggs? Twelve eggs. He seems to enjoy it. But it's not just eggs. It's lashings of butter, oodles of milk, and a mountain of cheese. This is heart attack city, this is. You are very naughty. Mm. Health-wise, there's a lot of fat. And it doesn't stop there. There's still dessert. We like to give him an ice pop, a cheese triangle. Right. And a little banana yogurt. Okay, okay, I understand the eggs, the cheese, the meat, the milk, the cheese triangle, but banana yogurt? Why banana and not strawberry? That's insane. But seriously, that amount of fat can easily cause a dog to have weight problems, gastrointestinal issues, and even inflammation of the pancreas. Yeah, this hurts because his claws are hurting my leg right now. I mean, yeah. that's really severe. <clears throat> Will we have to castrate? <clears throat> I don't know. If you're talking about chopping my dog's balls off, you're talking about chopping <clears throat> my balls off because that's the way I feel about it and I'm not going to let you chop my balls off. It is not your balls that are being chopped off. What he's saying is actually very common. Most times it will be the male owner that will be against castration because of thinking of himself in the same situation. As for the neuter or castration recommendations to solve the humping problem, I'm not really sure that it is such a clear-cut solution. Clear-cut castration, got it? I'll explain a bit more about it in a second. Clear cut, I kill me. If you think about what it's like having all of this testosterone going through your body and not being able to do what you're really programmed to do. Many animals, including teenagers and men in general, have testosterone surging through their body and brain all the time. And still, most animals and people will not hump everything they see. I wish it was that easy. Remove the testicles, remove the testosterone, remove the sex drive, remove the mounting. Problem solved. It's not that easy. And many neuter dogs will also hump. Why? Because it is usually not due to a sex drive. Don't believe me? 
I linked a few resources in the description below, but read them later. You have a few more minutes with me. From now on, he'll be regularly taken outside to toilet, and his access to water will also be controlled. So he has water with his food, but after six o'clock, he can have some ice cubes. Water deprivation might be dangerous. I assume they did all the necessary blood and urine tests to make sure that he doesn't have any underlying uh, medical issue like kidney disease or diabetes. If he does and they restrict his water, he might actually get sick. One of the best corrections you can give to your dog is a vocal correction. Correction is a nice way to say punishment. Punishment is technically the last thing you want to use and I must say that I never have to use it. And the vocal correction that I always use is an ah ah because it's short and sharp and it distracts the dog from what it's doing. If he does go up to hump somebody, then it's your responsibility to take action, to get him off that person. When you do the ah ah and he gets off, you must always praise him for the getting off action. So we're going to make this whole thing unpleasant for him. She's saying they are going to use this unpleasant sound as a distraction. I can accept it if it's really just to distract him and doesn't cause any distress. If it does cause distress, it will make him worse. He might become aggressive knowing that the sound means someone is going to pull him away. It really is interesting that he doesn't nip anybody else except you. I know, yeah. We have to devise a way of giving you more confidence and you being able to play with him without him going totally nuts. So I just want you, when you're with him, to be calmer because he can read your body like you would not believe. You mustn't show your fear anymore yeah. because there is nothing to fear from him. Dogs can read us very well. So well that they can tell if a person is going to have a seizure before the person even knows. So playing it like you're not afraid when you are is not going to work. It's like trying to fool a lie detection machine by having a straight face. Also, the kid has every reason in the world to be afraid of the dog, so don't tell him otherwise. His nose was just beaten not too long ago by the dog. But Victoria thinks part of the reason Pugsley's playing rough is down to his lack of exercise. She's determined to get him going for walks. I think one of the reasons why he doesn't want to walk is that previously this has been used. These choke chains can really, really hurt and makes what should be pleasurable very unpleasant. So I think we should literally just throw this away. Put a regular collar on him and we'll take him out and see what happens. Yes, exercise is great and throw the choke chain to the trash. But you might want to use a harness because it is a flat-faced dog with breathing issues. Still really nervous. Yeah. So I just want us to just hang out. Victoria introduces games to help Pugsley associate being outdoors with having fun. Pugsley! With your arms straight, that's it! 20 minutes later, Pugsley's nerves have calmed enough to get him walking on the lead. Are we walking? We're walking! Yes! We're walking! That's great. Really great. The only thing I want to say is that they are using a training lead. This long lead is not meant to be used for regular walks. They're probably going to switch it to a regular leash later. Sound aversion should be short, sharp and quick and have a quick effect. Don't keep doing it. If it's not working, go on to something else. When he does that on me, bang them very hard. With such an horrendous noise ringing in his ears, Pugsley's soon distracted from his humping. Don't look at him. It's important not to look your dog in the eye when using such dramatic sound aversion because you don't want your dog to associate fear of the noise with fear of his owner. If he doesn't hump me, then you tell him. Good boy. Good Really boy. tell him good boy. What a good boy. Everything she's saying is right. You don't want him to associate fear with his owner. But the dog isn't dumb. Looking away doesn't fool him. You can see he knows exactly who made the sound. 
And as I said before, there's a difference between using sound to distract him from the behavior and scaring him. That night, with Pugsley on his new schedule, there's not a cocked leg in sight. I just wanted you to hear him snore. Cute, right? Wrong! That's exactly the problem with the flat-faced dogs, the brachiocephalic dogs. If a dog snores like this, he will probably benefit from surgery to make his nostrils bigger and his soft palate shorter. These dogs can get heat strokes or even just collapse because of lack of oxygen when they're exercising too much or in a warm environment. The more you exercise him, the less he's going to hump. True, but exercise safely. The reason why a hydrotherapy pool is so good for Pugsley is because it's a way of him getting exercise, and it's fun. Come on then, Pugsley. In you go. There's a good boy, Pugsley. The pool is equipped with a series of jets, which makes the dog swim hard against the flow. There's a good boy. You're a good boy. You're a good lad. Is it fun? I'm not so sure about it. It can also be stressful especially when the dog doesn't have a choice. Also, is it me or is the tip of his tongue purple? If it's purple, then they should get him out of there right now. That means he's not getting enough oxygen. Maybe castration would lessen that humping behavior. Back to the castration. She said maybe. She didn't say castration will. And that's true. If we look at the literature, and I linked two articles below in the description, even after castration, only about half of the dogs had an effect on humping. Of those who did, not all stopped completely, but only did it less frequently. The age of the neuter surgery might not even play a role, so the same effect will be in young or older dogs. If that is true, then you don't need to feel rushed into neutering your dog. Having said that, I'm not entirely against it. Neutering has different effects on health and behavior. Some good, some bad. So you need to think about the pros and cons when making a decision. I do recommend neutering, but more because of overpopulation issues and some health issues, and less because of behavior. If everything else fails to try and change the mounting behavior, then castration should be considered. So, now the ball's in your court, Nick. The balls are in his court, <laughs> They also do dead jokes. Victoria Stilwell is really great, so check out the full video, link in the description. I have some things to say, but I do think she's really good. The bottom line is that even famous trainers might not always do things the way that I do, which is, of course, the best way in the world. You can check out what I thought about another famous dog trainer, Cesar Milan, in this video.